It's only very recently that I'm probably in a position where I can choose a film. Otherwise, uh, if I'm only doing feature films, I finish one feature film and then you have to get into another feature film. So this question of choice, and I don't do anything else for a living. Till some time back, it was whatever was available, the best possible thing. Uh, whatever matches your dates, uh, that kind of situation. Only off late, I'm, I'm probably in a position to pick and choose. It's not one particular thing. Sometimes uh, you choose a filmmaker. But largely, uh, what I try to see is whether the, whether I have something to contribute to the film or not. Whether it, it excites me or not. Whether as a film I'll be interested in watching that film or not. That's what I try to do now because you know, there's been in the past there's been situations where I've uh, probably have um, done a film because I had to do the film. And uh, I've seen one thing that if I, if while reading the script, if anything has bothered me, it has bothered everybody else while watching the film. With Sanjay on Bajirao, it was an interesting process. So that particular period uh, is not at all documented well. The Maratha period is not well documented at all. There is not much reading material. There is not much visual material to see. So we toured around a little bit. Basically, we were looking at architectural references also. Wherever I was going, I was taking still pictures. I have also been collecting uh, stuff, films, uh, references from paintings. So whatever images come to my mind, I would uh, kind of make a collage of them. Clips from five different films or you know some still photographs, some paintings, something. So I would make a compilation of those. Like this, you know, every scene, I made a whole compilation of stuff. And then I started sharing it with Sanjay. That, uh, okay, this is what I think, this is where we could go. This is what, okay, then we would discuss uh, and kind of, yeah, this is something we like. Maybe this part we can use. Maybe this we can use for a lighting reference. This we can use for an architectural reference. We made a, actually a, a scrapbook kind of a thing. So with a one line order, so with the one line maybe on page, the <coughs> scene would be written and then will be these are the th things we have liked. I think we didn't get enough time on post and post could have been far better. Post in some parts of the film I think was up to the mark, in some part I think it was terrible. Initially so much time went in getting that war correct and stuff comes and you reject and it go again goes again and then suddenly you realize, oh my god the release is here. Then like particularly that Moherangdo song when it happened. It was an outright reject for us, but we, there was just no time to replace it. We feel the perspectives were wrong. It was entirely shot on green screen. And uh, then my idea was that we'll shoot the whole song and then we'll go back and shoot all the plates. I never got time to do that. Uh, the way the schedule was going, we never got time to, it was second unit work. I kind of understand that camera well. I know if my key is uh, a stopover and uh, if my fill is like three stops under, I know exactly how the contrast will render on screen. So since I've only been working on uh, Alex, I've kind of understood it well. Maybe there are other cameras which are as good, I, but I haven't really explored. I had to use red on Chotushkun because there was nothing else available. And uh, I was not very happy with the way the outdoors turned out. I think Alexa performs better on in outdoors, in daylight situations. But having said that, I mean, there are some films I've seen on red which are beautifully shot. At the time when film went off, we really mastered it in terms of how to uh, uh, process and everything. I just went off at that point of time. When I did Dhoom, film was still around. I could see the change coming. I could see the change coming and Dhoom for me was like the correct film to get into it because it was like a big production and I knew that I would get the complete infrastructural support. We could buy new cameras. I had the time to prep. People tell me that uh, uh, I don't have to do DI. It will still be a chemical process. I'll probably still shoot on film. But that's also being very romantic about it. For all practical purposes, <coughs> it doesn't make sense anymore. See, in Bajira, <coughs> what we did was, uh, uh, it was little more organized in the sense that we first made a board for the war sequence I'm telling you. We first made a board. And uh, once the board was uh, there, and for the board, I was completely involved in making the board. In the sense, I used to sit with the uh, with the board artist and tell him that, okay, no, uh, this is the image that you made. I said, no, you know, make the camera angle a little lower or give me a little wider lens. Bring that into foreground. So that since it was, I mean, I had enough time to sit with him and actually create uh, a proper storyboard. Once that was done, uh, then we sat with action, VFX and art. 
now you tell me art how much are you going to be making in this vfx how, how much action can you actually do if not okay how much are you coming in vfx can we do this can we shoot that so so we so we ended up actually uh, having the entire board as various layers so before going to the shoot we had a, a clear idea that okay this is what we are shooting now like for instance uh, uh, in the war sequences in bali now we never shot the actors on location the entire actor was work was done later on the studio and everything was like what we shot in location in rajasthan was day for night uh, basically background creates ranveer was shot later in the studio sometimes he would be in the uh, mid ground sometimes he would be in the foreground sometimes he would be in the background horse riding shot everything uh, was prosthetic horse uh, close up work was prosthetic horse hmm. um, done in the studio uh, if it's a wider shot then it's uh, either a double we actually attempted shooting with uh, hmm. ranveer and he had a very bad accident he fell from the horse ranveer and the double and that you see she falls and she brings him down he missed those fire by inches and then <laughs> this is on the second day of the shoot so then ranveer was gone so this was a kind of a uh, condition it was full bright sunlight and we had already planned that we'll be changing the sky and everything everything was white screen uh, vfx person prasad was also very comfortable with it i found it very easy to light up with that when you're lighting up on green screen all you get to Well, lighting access is the top. Light always doesn't come from the top. It also comes from the side. It comes from you get side bounce. You get a lot of it's bouncing off the floor. It's coming from all around you. It's like a wrap. In an actual shooting, how, what we do? I mean, with Alexa, I hardly use a skimmer. Like on film, we used to use a skimmer to fill in. Today we are not using this. It's so low contrast that you uh, we are instead of skimmers, we are only using black skimmers and black mm -hmm. thermocols wrapped in black. That's basically my lighting tool. That's how I approached it. That I lit up like a real location, and then how you would. box office has no significance really it doesn't increase your market value it doesn't doesn't mean that if you run a hit film you're getting more paid you know it's not that doesn't happen there are some films which I'm terribly embarrassed about like like uh, if you look at my films you can understand there are some which <laughs> till i shot that film you realize you if the director is not uh, interested in the visual then you can't do anything i mean it has to so that also gives you a lot of humility and a lot of way that you know eventually a director has to want bajirao looks like bajirao because a director wanted it to look like that first of all chakde is very uh, uh, an important film for me because that's a film that uh, you know very few people believed in and i really liked it and i gave up a few other films to do that while we were shooting the film there was a lot of negativity around a lot of people were saying that you know what are you doing like looks really bad it looks like a documentary like you're ruining your career with something like that it's all handled and what shit is this by the time the film was complete it was being made there was not too many people who was believing in the film but we really went in with a lot of faith i did exactly what i wanted to do and it gave me a lot of confidence that you know that it was finally accepted and a lot of people uh, liked the film a lot of people liked my work uh, when i'm shooting a big budget film or a small budget film i don't remember that you know every film has a uh, a demand i don't consciously remember that oh this is a big budget film so i should shoot it like that Or it's a small budget film. I shoot it like that. Like for instance, on Chotushkon, I gave a lighting requirement, a couple of dinos and this that will light up a thing. I said, no, no, no. The producers they jumped on. We don't have budgets. We don't have budgets, meaning. So no, there's no budget for this kind of lights. They don't light only like that. So I said, then why have you written a scene like this? It's a night scene in a forest. How do you expect me to shoot? You need to see that it's a forest, no? So, but there's the end of it. There is no budget. So then we said, okay, what can we do? Uh, I don't know if you have seen the film. Uh, there's a sequence where they use some torches. So I said, okay, can we give torches to these guys? I said, yeah, probably that's something. So not everyone, like a couple of them had torches. I said, okay, so okay, this is how we're going to shoot. If uh, they are coming towards camera, you'll see flares, or you'll see somebody uh, getting silhouetted by a beam of light. That's all you'll see. If you're shooting the other way, whatever the torch lights up, that is what you're going to see. That's, and it turned out really well. So it is, it is guided by, uh, I mean, maybe up to that extent. That there are sometimes on a smaller film you may not have access to. There is no different uh, approach to a small budget or a big budget. What I was hoping when I started, when I got the set and when the design came and when actually it was made, and I stood inside and I was like wondering what to, how to uh, do. Firstly, uh, in the film, the central dome that you see was not there. Hmm. Central dome was not there. There was a hollow, which is not very big. Uh, probably it's a 20 by 20 hollow we had, and the softies were. I wasn't angling it directly down. I was mostly angling it towards the mirror walls, 
so you could get a lot of that's what initially i was hoping that you know i could get a lot of bounce of the mirrors itself none of the mirrors were very big they're not broken mirrors small 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 mirrors so a lot of times you actually see the reflection of the lights but since the mirror the reflections are so, so small you can't really make out uh, skimmers of mirchi lights you know on a 12 by 12 frame would like put uh, like maybe you know 20 lines like this 20 lines like that make like a uh, bank of mirchi lights and uh, uh, i had them in various sizes so those were basically my ground lighting a lot of times sanjay does this that the character runs towards the camera so i would have a couple of soft boxes relaying that light mm -hmm. and uh, i would sit on the uh, dimmer board and i would actually switch. control them wh while the shot was on thing i missed out on was a lot of times i couldn't operate the camera because of that the the fire sources can be either it can be bowls of fire yeah. then it's larger then it's large and the flickering is a lot more it could be mashal which is also heavily flickered a lot of times uh, in the indoor uh, they used to have these um, yeah. chandeliers mm -hmm. so there the, the thing is inside the the glass thing so that that's not that much flicker within the frame maybe Architecture. even if something is flickering in the background that's good enough to give an impression otherwise it you coming like <laughs> it looks a little disturbing so i really cut it down mm -hmm. i really like the way uh, the beaches they render uh, uh, flame source like when you have multiple flame sources mirchi is something really nice and soft keeping on the ground uh, i was doing it to pick up little reflections on the dress and costume and because there was so much uh, little bit of gold work and all that so they pick up very interesting highlights i got the idea from uh, uh, roger dickens he used it in prisoners Uh, in the American cinema, there was a diagram. Uh, there was a picture of actually those. So I uh, said, okay, it's a great idea. So I tried it out and I really liked it. Mm -hmm. That apart, I also used a lot of actual flame lights mm -hmm. and a lot of mushals also. A lot of stuff was actually lit with mushals. with actual mushals. You had to tell the actor, like you know, you to hold it uh, uh, <laughs> close, to close to your face. <laughs> tell them it will look nice if you if you don't put it here. <laughs> we were doing one song which is not there in the film. Finally, so we had a whole song shot, and finally it was taken out of the film. it was not working so that whole song was shot with priyanka holding a mushal and doing this thing so she has a habit of holding it there as much you can't hold it there because you're looking terrible if you hold the mushal there mm -hmm. she's like a very heroic she was not but you have to you have to hold it here you know so you have to figure out because that's the only way i can light you because if you're holding a mushal that has a light and i can't give an extra light because it will be a big mess so this has to be your light I read that. I didn't understand what it meant. I don't know whether he was being sarcastic <laughs> or whether it was being uh, p p whether he's be he's being complimentary. I didn't understand. Uh, it said uh, unless you're, uh, so which is what? No, of course it's a struggle for me as well. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, if the indication was that that uh, just because it's a Sanjay Manjari film and you have all the time and liberty and whatever it is, uh, it's still a struggle. Yeah. On on Bajirao, a lot of the daylight stuff in Shanivar Wada was shot at night. Anything in the set is. in an outdoor set was daylight was shot at night rostrums uh, from outside the set and the set itself had uh, uh, like supporters which we had uh, planned and the whole thing was skimmed down the rostrums would be outside and uh, there would be supports from the center to hold the white cloth and the set ke upar on this level we used to have uh, lights which we used to bounce off the sky on the thing and that became like sky light and in the low angle shots the, those were cleaned up and erased and we put sky <coughs> South Indian cinematography, uh, particularly, uh, I've been largely inspiring from for me. P. C. Shiram, uh, Rajiv Menon, uh, Santosh Shivan, uh, K. V. Anand, uh, those Madhu Ambar. There's so many of them that I've really grown up. It'd be very very honourable for me to. I'd be I'd be really honoured to do something if somebody offers me something <coughs> from here.